How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video and today we have the Vankyo V600 projector. This is a 1080p projector that is under $300. So at first glance the specs here are pretty good. It's 1080p, it's got some good lumens and it's on Amazon. So this thing should be pretty good, right? Well considering the stuff that's out there, it's actually pretty decent. So what we have here is a standard size projector. It does feel pretty good. Of course it's made out of plastic but the build quality does feel pretty solid. On the front we have the IR sensor as well as the projector screen lens right here and of course it does come with this little cap but you can't put the cap on if the lens is extended outwards which means every time you want to pack it up you got to retract the lens all the way into the body and then clip it on. On the bottom we got a little wheel right here to adjust the height if you have an uneven surface. You got four rubber feet, four mounting points, the ventilation holes and all that good stuff. Now moving on to the left side you'll find the SD card slot, the AV in and the audio out slash headphone jack. You'll also find the giant heatsink slash exhaust vent and this is where the hot air will be blowing from. So definitely stay out of its way and we're gonna see how hot it gets and if it's noisy and all that good stuff. And lastly, taking a look at the back, we got a standard PC plug alongside a fuse box, two HDMI ports, two USB ports, another IR sensor so you won't have any troubles trying to get the right angle of your remote, as well as a VJ in, which can be a lifesaver in some cases. We have the single firing back speaker right here, which does sound pretty good. It's going to get the job done. And finally, on the top, we have a plastic aluminum textured finish, the keystone correction, as well as the focus adjustments, and they feel pretty decent. On the bottom right corner, we have the navigation buttons, and they all feel pretty decent, except for the power button. It's kind of weird, but it's uh, also pretty okay. And the controller here is your standard controller. It's actually pretty clean looking, which I do like. They are all tactile buttons as well, and you got all the basic functions that you need. We got source, menu, back, navigation, pause and play, and all that good stuff. And the battery compartment here takes two AAA batteries, which are not included. So with that out of the way, is this projector any good? Well, let's go ahead and find out. All right, so here's the setup that we are working with here. So we got the projector stacked on top of a bunch of random things. We got my laptop right here, which is a 1050 Ti. We got two bright lights that have four bulbs each. So we're gonna see if this projector can actually compete with them. We're gonna be trying out some games, some movies, some anime, some TV shows, and some random things. We're gonna be checking the temperatures, measure the screen size, and see how much light is left when you actually enlarge the image. And for this test, we're gonna be using my wall right here. Although it is not perfect, it has done a pretty good job. And yes, I have tried the included projection screen. And we will be talking about it at the end of the video. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so here we are at the blue screen and you can see that the screen here is competing with these bright lights. And again, they both have four really bright bulbs. So let's go ahead and turn off one of them. So this is kind of simulating some daylight entering the room and uh, it still does a pretty decent job. And now if we go ahead and turn off the other one, we can see that things look much, much better. So let's go ahead and make sure everything is nicely in focus. And we can see that we have a bunch of different inputs. Again, the VGA, the two HDMIs, the AV, the USB, and the SD card. And yes, it does have a built-in video player. So let's go ahead and plug in a flash drive on the top USB, since the second USB is meant for powering an Android box, for example. And from here, we can go ahead and select USB, and then it will bring up the built-in media player, which although it does work, I probably don't recommend using it since it is not the most user-friendly and it doesn't support all the video codecs. But when you're in a pinch, it does get the job done and it does it pretty decently. Just keep in mind, you may encounter some hiccups here and there depending on how your video is encoded. So yeah, you can play movies, you can play music, view pictures and text, which again, honestly can come in handy. So click on movies, click on the C drive, and then you'll end up right over here. So we can go ahead and choose a movie. And as you can see, it says that this file is not supported. So again, this media player can be used on the top USB port as well as the side SD card slot. So let's get out of here and jump into the laptop. And this is where all the fun happens. So I've actually spent about half an hour figuring out on how to get the best picture quality. And I settled on the following settings. So let's go ahead and jump into the settings menu and show you how things are set. So when you click the settings menu, you'll be brought to this menu right here. Usually the background is black, but I changed it to a be transparent. So it's more modern. Picture mode, you have user. That's what I have right now. Then you have vivid, which looks ugly. Standard, looks okay. Over sharpened. And then you have soft. Again, it all depends on what you're playing. It might be good, it might be not. And then back to user. So as you can see, there are a big difference between these colors and they're all just very widely varying. And yeah, these are my settings. So go ahead and copy them if you would like. Again, these are calibrated and set according to my wall colors. So this is what looks best on my wall color. It may not look best on yours, but nonetheless, feel free to copy it down and tweak it to your liking. So contrast 15, brightness 60, color 60, sharpness 20. Too much sharpening sometimes isn't great. So let's get out of here and jump into the color temperature where you can go ahead and set up your color. So you have warm, medium, cool, and then you have user where you can go ahead and really just tweak it. Then we have aspect ratio and there's plenty of options to choose from. We got four by three, 16 by nine, zoom, scan, all that good stuff. Then we have noise reduction and I probably recommend having this on. I don't know why, I think it just makes everything look smoother. Then right down here we have the image flip. They just have it labeled differently. Pretty self-explanatory. 
And lastly, for the picture menu, we have the reduced display size, and that can come in pretty handy. Now, moving on to the next menu, which is sound, and we have a couple different options. So we have sound mode, you can go ahead and adjust your trebles and bass. Pretty useful. We also have balance, you can balance on your right and left. And lastly, we have auto volume, which I probably recommend keeping off. And finally, you can go ahead and change your language, reset factory, blending, which will change how your background is. So that is default, and I have it on high, which makes it look the best. The menu timeout and a software update option, which probably will never happen. Now, of course, you may have noticed something and that this menu, it looks familiar. And yes, it is a common menu that is used on many budget cheap projectors. And this one is using it as well. So with the menus out of the way, how is the image quality and does it focus properly? Well, again, my wall here is not perfect. And some of the corners, especially the top right corner, I really have a hard time getting it to be 100% in focus or close enough compared to the rest of the image. With these type of projectors, you gotta either sacrifice the middle focus or the outer edge focus. And that's just how the lenses are. Which of course, usually you wanna set up your center focus as your priority and the edges will usually be slightly out of focus. So with that, how out of focus is it? Well, let's go ahead and take a closer look. So here's what the center looks like, and as you can see, it looks pretty clean. Again, it is a 1080p projector, and it's doing a pretty good job. Right now, I don't see any noise, and things just look pretty clean for the most part. Now, for the top right corner, we can see that there's some diffraction, and it's slightly out of focus, which this background really doesn't help. Here's the bottom right, bottom left, and the top left. And as you can see, it doesn't look too terrible, at least on the small screen. When you're sitting farther away, it will look pretty okay. And really, this is gonna be perfectly fine for most people. Again, it is a budget projector, and so far, the performance here has been pretty great in terms of picture quality, once tweaked, and responsiveness. And this is where things get really, really exciting. Let me show you. And when I say responsive, I mean actual display response time. Can this display keep up, and is it good enough for gaming? Well, surprisingly, yes, it is actually pretty good compared to a lot of TVs and a lot of projectors out there, even the expensive ones, this projector actually keeps up pretty well. Now, of course, you can see there's a big difference. So yeah, if you're actually trying this out in person, it feels very natural and it doesn't feel like it has a substantial delay. And if you're wondering, yes, the ghosting here is under control and it's not that bad, not terrible at all. Definitely great for gaming, which we will be doing right about now. <laughs> And just as a reference, here's what it looks like when it is blown up at 105 inches. As you can see, things still look pretty good. And so, this is the BenQ V600 projector. 
Is it any good? I would say absolutely yes. It is actually pretty great once you calibrate the colors. And really my only two main complaints about this thing is that the outer edges are slightly out of focus, but again it is normal and really that is to be expected with budget projectors. When you're playing something you won't even notice it since you're focused on the center of the screen. And as long as there's no text on the edges you should be pretty okay. The other issue that I have, which is really the only other issue that I do have so far, would be that it's a bit too loud. Yes, it does produce some heat, which is, again, to be expected with a powerful projector like this. It is pretty bright, and that's really where most of the heat is coming from. There might be a possibility to actually install a Noctua fan, but the sound of this fan here sounds like it is a special blower fan. So who knows, maybe we'll make a feature video, taking this thing apart and modding it and making it quiet. So do I recommend it? I would say yeah. I would give it my Commando Stab approval. I really have enjoyed it. Once again, calibrate the colors and you'll actually have yourself a really good experience. Now, you have noticed that I have stacked this thing on a bunch of different items. I bought three boxes, two NESs, and an Xbox One. All stacked on top of this table right here. So to get around that, there's actually a tray on Amazon they can get that is fairly cheap. Basically, it is an elevated tripod kind of thing that will hold this thing in place at various heights. And here's a picture of what it looks like. So if you're interested, look for it in the description below. And other than that, there is the included projection screen. Now this material does feel really nice and it does look really good. And at first glance, it may look like a perfect projection screen since it is nice and white. And at the same time, there won't be any ripples in the actual screen once you actually stretch it out because it is a stretchy material. But unfortunately, this thing might only be good enough for maybe a blanket. All right, to save you guys about five minutes worth of video, essentially this projection screen is good enough for outdoors use, but it may not be my first option for indoors use. And the reason is the material is semi-see-through, and what ends up happening is two things. One of them is light spill, and what happens is the light actually bounces between the threads, and it causes a whole lot of light spill. The second problem is, if you actually have this mounted in front of a white wall, some of the light will bounce into the wall, back into the screen, back into your eyes, and it'll end up with kind of a bloomy effect. So don't recommend it. I would say first try out your wall. If it doesn't work, maybe get this thing and see how it works for you. And really, that's about it for this video. There's not a whole lot to talk about. Maybe I'll have a dedicated video talking about projection screens, or at least talk about the budget options. But yeah, I totally recommend this projector. It's under $300, it's 1080p, it's very bright, and it has most of the functions that you'd need on a projector at this price point. And um, yeah, that is all for this video. Links will be in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.